All right, buckle up everyone, because today we're diving into some research that's really flipping the script on how we think about the stock market. Oh yeah, this one is a head spinner. We're looking at a paper called Technical Patterns and New Sentiment in Stock Markets. Catchy. Super fun. catchy by Leipold, Wang, and Yang. That's the one. So you know those charts that like every trader is obsessed with? Oh yeah. Trying to find those patterns to, you know, predict where the market's going. The crystal ball, yeah. Well, this research is like putting some actual science behind it. Yeah, it's not just like, you know, drawing lines in the sand anymore. It's like, is there something really there? Right, exactly. And they're looking at it in a really cool way. So set the stage for us. What's the big idea here? Okay, so what's really cool is that they're not just saying, hey, look, these patterns work. They're combining those visual cues with something we all know impacts the market news. News, right. Sentiment, the feels. Like, imagine you see a classic double top pattern on a stock chart right? Which, you know, signals a potential price drop. Classic, yeah. But then you layer on some negative news about the company. Oh. Suddenly that pattern becomes a much stronger indicator. It's not just a maybe. It's like, oh, something's really going on here. So it's like adding those two pieces together is giving you a bigger picture. It's the whole picture, man. It's like merging those visual signals with the emotional undercurrent of the market. Like, is everyone freaking out? Are they excited? You know? Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. So they're basically saying that charts aren't just about lines and numbers. They're a window into like... The collective psychology of the market, man. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty wild. That's heavy. It is. But here's where it gets even cooler. Okay. Lay it on me. They didn't just rely on like, you know... Bob from down the street looking at a chart and being like, I think it's going up. You know what I mean? Right, right. Bob's not the most reliable. <laughs> no, no offense to Bob's out there, but they trained an AI to do it, a convolutional neural network or CNN. A CNN. Yeah, it's this fancy image recognition tech, Okay. like facial recognition, but for stock patterns. So hold on. So they basically taught a computer to read the emotions of the market. In a way, yeah. It's learning to see what we see. Right. And the results are pretty mind-blowing. I bet. Give me the highlights. So they found that this CNN could identify way more patterns than like traditional methods, you know, just humans looking at charts. Way more. And it often spotted them earlier, which in trading, that's huge. Like if you can see it coming before everyone else. Oh, you're golden. You're golden, man. Okay, I'm officially hooked. So we've got this AI seeing patterns like a pro and we're layering on new sentiment, making it even stronger. But like, how did they actually put this into action? Did they just sit back and watch or did they actually like test it out? Oh, they went full on mad scientists. They built a whole portfolio based on these pattern sentiment signals. Whoa. OK. Tell me more about that. So they were buying stocks with bottom patterns and positive news and shorting stocks with top patterns and negative news. So they're playing both sides. <laughs> exactly. Like riding the wanes of the market, man. And get this. They cracked the code. Big time, especially in the Chinese market. Saw some insane returns there. Okay, returns. That's what I like to hear. But what about the stocks themselves? Did they notice that some types of stocks were like more prone to these patterns and sentiments? That's where things get really juicy. They found that it really depended on the stock's personality, you know, like its characteristics. Okay, so give me the rundown. What kind of stocks were we talking about? Well, in the US, stocks with high momentum, lots of institutional ownership, and get this, a history of showing patterns in the past, those are the ones that really reacted strongly to these signals. So it's like some stocks have a track record of following these patterns, so they're more predictable. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, man. Whoa, that's wild. It is. And in the Chinese market, smaller companies with high momentum and lots of institutional ownership, they were the stars of the show. Huh. Now that makes me wonder, why would those specific characteristics make a difference? What's the link between all of that and a stock's, like, 
susceptibility to these patterns? That's the million dollar question, right? And that leads us down a rabbit hole of how this all actually works. So we've seen that combining these technical patterns with new sentiment can lead to some pretty impressive results, especially for stocks with like certain personalities, you know? Right. But I'm a bit of a data nerd. I want to know the specifics. How do they actually measure the success of this approach? Well, they used a metric called cumulative abnormal return, CR for short. Okay. Think of it this way. Imagine you're watching a horse race, right? Each horse has its own odds based on, you know, past performance and all that. Okay, got it. Now let's say one horse out of nowhere just takes off way beyond what anyone expected. A dark horse. Exactly. That unexpected boost, that's kind of what Sciara measures in the stock market. So if a stock is suddenly exceeding expectations after one of these pattern sentiment signals, that's a good sign, right? Like the signal actually meant something. Bingo. They calculated these cars for different holding periods from like five days to even 42 days after a signal. Long term and short term. Exactly. And to make sure these returns weren't just random, you know, flukes. Sure. They used some heavy duty statistical analysis. What they found was pretty eye opening. OK, I'm ready. Hit me with the insights. First, they wanted to see how much adding new sentiment really mattered, right? So they compared the cars after pattern only events, like just the AI doing its thing. OK. Versus pattern sentiment events where you add in the news. The combo. Exactly. Now, in the U.S. market, both types of events actually led to some decent returns. Interesting. So even without the news, the patterns themselves have some value. It seems so, yeah. Like the AI is picking up on something real, but when they added the news sentiment, boom, the performance of those signals went through the roof. So it's like the sentiment is the confirmation, right? It's like, yeah, this pattern is legit. It's the fuel to the fire, man, especially in those first few days after the event. I bet. Mm. Do you have an example of how this played out, like in a real world scenario? Sure. Let's say the AI spots a head and shoulders pattern, right? Classic bearish signal. Price is probably going down. Okay, I'm picturing it. Now, right after that pattern forms, bam. Some negative news about the company drops. Everyone starts freaking out. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Nope. And guess what? The stock price tanks, just like the pattern predicted. So it's not just that sentiment makes the signal stronger, it's like it makes it more reliable. Exactly. It's that consistency that's so powerful. And this consistency, it was even more obvious when they looked at pairs of top and bottom patterns. Pairs? What oh. do you mean? Like a double top with a double bottom, that kind of thing. Adding the sentiment created this beautiful symmetry, like the returns after those paired signals were almost mirroring each other. Oh, wow. I see. Like a push and pull, bullish and bearish. Exactly. It shows how those patterns fit into the overall mood of the market. But remember we were talking about how this approach worked even better in the Chinese market? Oh, yeah. What was it about the Chinese market that made these signals go wild? Well, for starters, they saw even stronger results in the Chinese market. Statistically significant, like off the charts. Well, wow, really? Why do you think that is? It's like the Chinese market with its own unique vibe, maybe a stronger reaction to news provided the perfect environment for these patterns to pop. It's like they amplified everything. Interesting. But earlier you mentioned that certain characteristics of a stock also mattered, like which types of stocks were more likely to react to these pattern sentiment signals. Right. They found some pretty clear trends in both the U.S. and the Chinese market. OK, break it down for me. What were the common threads? Well, in the U.S., stocks with high momentum, meaning they had been trending strongly upwards or downwards, those were the ones that really responded to these signals. It's like they're already on the move, and these signals just give them an extra push. Exactly. But then there's institutional ownership. Ah, the big players. The big dogs, yeah. Stocks with a high percentage of ownership by institutions, they were also more sensitive to these patterns and sentiments. That's interesting. You'd think those institutions with their fancy analysts and models would be more focused on the fundamentals, right? Not just following the herd. You'd think so, wouldn't you? But it seems even they can't completely ignore the power of market psychology. Maybe they use it to kind of gauge which way the wind is blowing, you know? Makes sense. They're not ditching their fundamental analysis, but they're also paying attention to what the market is feeling. Exactly. And here's another fascinating thing. They found that stocks with a history of exhibiting technical patterns in the past were more likely to respond to new signals. It's like they're creatures of habit, these stocks. 
It's like they have a track record, a reputation for reacting to these patterns. And investors have learned to expect that, which makes the patterns even stronger. A self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. Now, in the Chinese market, some of these same trends held true, but there were some interesting twists. Ooh, twists. I like twists. Spill the tea. Well, just like in the U.S., momentum was a huge factor in the Chinese market. But here's the kicker. Smaller firms actually showed more pronounced results than larger ones. Really? Why would smaller firms be more sensitive? One theory is that they tend to have less analyst coverage, less publicly available information. So investors might rely more heavily on technical analysis and news sentiment because they don't have as much fundamental data to go on. It's like they're filling in the gaps with these signals. Exactly. And just like in the U.S., institutional ownership was a positive factor in the Chinese market, too. The more institutions owned a stock, the more likely it was to move in the expected direction after a pattern sentiment signal. So no matter where you look, it seems those big institutions are definitely paying attention to these signals. Even if it's not their main strategy, they're using it to get a read on the market. But, you know, I'm always looking for the practical application here. Can we actually make money from this? Like, is this something people can actually use? Well, that's exactly what the researchers wanted to find out. They took all of this knowledge, all these insights, and they built an actual portfolio based on these pattern sentiment signals. Okay, now we're talking portfolios, profits. That's what I like to hear. Tell me about this portfolio. How did they structure it? What happened? They used what's called a long short portfolio strategy. Basically, they were playing both sides of the market. Interesting. So not putting all their eggs in one basket. Exactly. They bought stocks that were showing those bottom patterns, like the bullish signals, like double bottoms or inverted head and shoulders. And of course, they made sure there was positive news sentiment surrounding those stocks. Buy low, sell high. The classic strategy. Exactly. But with the long short approach, they also bet against certain stocks, you know, shorting them. So they're capitalizing on both the ups and the downs. Exactly. They shorted stocks that were showing those top patterns, the bearish signals, like the double tops or the head and shoulders. And again, they made sure there was negative new sentiment to back it up. So they're hedging their bets, maximizing their potential returns no matter which way the market moves. Clever. But did it actually work? Oh, it worked beautifully. They tracked this portfolio's performance for several years and compared it to different benchmarks to see how it stacked up. The results were astounding, especially in the Chinese market. They achieved an annualized sharp ratio of 4.04. Hold on, 4.04? That sounds insane. Remind me what the sharp ratio means again. It's like a measure of how much return you get for each unit of risk you take on. And a sharp ratio of 4.04, .04, that's like unicorn territory. It means this portfolio wasn't just lucky, it was consistently generating exceptional returns for the level of risk involved. So they weren't just riding a hot market or getting lucky. This was consistent outperformance, way beyond what you'd expect. That's what they call alpha, right? Those returns you can't explain with traditional market factors. But they didn't just stop there. They wanted to be absolutely sure that this success wasn't due to some other factor, you know, some other well-known market force. So they wanted to rule out all the usual suspects. Exactly. They ran some tests to see if those returns could be attributed to other factors like market risk, size, value, momentum, all the classics. Okay, so what was the verdict? Was it truly something special? Or could they explain it away? Well, the results are pretty clear. They found that even after they took all the usual suspects into account, you know, all those classic factors like market risk, size, value, momentum, all those things. The usual gang. The usual gang, exactly. The portfolio is still in the green, still generating a positive alpha. Okay, alpha, right, good thing. Remind me again why that alpha is so important in this whole thing. Alpha is like the secret ingredient, you know? It's that extra something special that makes this portfolio stand out. It's the return you get that you can't just explain away by saying, oh, the market was just up, or small companies were doing well that year. So it's like saying, this portfolio isn't just riding the wave, it's creating its own wave. Boom, exactly. Yeah. It's generating those returns that those traditional models just can't quite figure out. That's what makes these pattern sentiment signals so interesting, right? They're like pointing to something that we haven't really grasped before. 
Absolutely. It suggests they're tapping into some kind of hidden information source that those standard factors completely miss. It's like they found a new way to decode the market's language, merging those visual patterns on the charts with those emotional currents, you know, all that news and sentiments. Okay, that's pretty mind-blowing, I gotta say. Yeah. But, I mean, they did find some connections to those standard factors, right? It wasn't a total disconnect. Right, right. It wasn't like a clean break. In both the U.S. and Chinese markets, the portfolio had a bit of a positive link to market risk and size. So it tended to do well when the overall market was up and when those smaller companies were outperforming the big guys. Right, exactly. But the key takeaway here, and this is the big one, is that those factors alone couldn't explain those crazy returns. That alpha was still there, that extra edge that those pattern sentiment signals were bringing to the game. Like a cherry on top. The cherry on top, exactly. It's what makes this research so fascinating. It's not saying that those traditional factors are useless, no way. But this approach, this way of looking at things, is adding this whole new layer to how we think about markets and how we can try to navigate them, you know, maybe make smarter choices. So does this mean technical analysis when you combine it with AI and sentiment analysis is like the secret to unlocking massive riches in the market? Is this the holy grail? everyone's been searching for. Hold your horses. We got to be realistic here. This is just one study and markets are wild, man. They're constantly changing. It's a jungle out there. Truly. But what this research really shows is that there's way more to the market than what you just see on the surface. Those human emotions, all those behaviors that people think are irrational, they actually leave clues on the charts. And with this new approach, we can see those clues, maybe even use them to our advantage. Yeah. Even with all the fancy algorithms and data we have now, it's still those human emotions, all that messy stuff that's really driving the market. At the end of the day, the market's just a reflection of ourselves, you know, our hopes and fears, our biases, how we react to things. Right on. And this research gives us a peek into how we might be able to harness all of that, not just to understand the market better, but to maybe make some smarter choices when it comes to investing. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling super inspired. What about our listeners out there? who want to learn more, explore this whole world, where should they start? Well, the first thing I'd say is go straight to the source. Check out the full research paper, Technical Patterns and News Sentiment in Stock Markets by Leipold, Wang, and Yang. It's got all the juicy details that we didn't have time to cover today. Yeah, and remember, this is just the beginning of the journey, the tip of the iceberg. There's a ton of research out there that's exploring this fascinating world where finance, technology, and human behavior all collide. Keep those minds curious. Keep exploring. Who knows what other hidden patterns are waiting to be discovered? Absolutely. But a word of caution, remember, investing in the stock market always comes with risks. This research isn't financial advice. It's a launching pad for your own adventures. Markets are always changing, evolving, so stay sharp. Keep asking questions. That's such a good point. Keep those minds sharp, those questions coming, and we'll catch you on the next Deep Dive. 